One of my favorite things about owning a 3D printer is that you can show someone how you really feel by giving them the perfect physical gift. I love you, so here's a rose. You're my pal, here's a headphone stand. I want to watch you suffer, so here's a teacup studded with human teeth. I have assembled 10 terrible 3D prints that will make anyone's life just a touch more miserable. We got a cursed koozie, a rage inducing desk lamp, and a switchblade that will cut their very soul. All 10 are totally free and if you got some basic filament and household knickknacks, you can darken someone's day right away. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, happiness is a zero sum game, so here are 10 awful prints for people you hate only at Void Star Lab. As always, all models are linked and credited in the description, and as you download them, do me a solid and keep the video running in the background to appease the unfeeling, inhuman algorithmic taskmaster that decides whether Brooke and I eat. For the first time, I'm also linking the filament. Never done that before, and I'm a little bit nervous to roll the dice. You would too if your dice look like this. Number 10 is Skew Dice by Carlos Luna. Technically, Skew Dice is actually a trademarked product, and what Carlos made is an open source source reproduction, but you know the rules. It ain't piracy if it's 3D printed. These horrid hexahedrons might look like the acid just kicked in, but these are real functional six-sided dice that randomly roll exactly like the classic cubes your cousin swallowed at Thanksgiving to make the Monopoly game stop. The skew dice are totally fair, although not at all square, and if you don't believe me, the Mr. Carlos Luna, dripping elemental alpha chatitude from every pore, cited a research paper that proves it. It all looks so wrong, but these so-called asymmetric trigonal trapezohedrons are the least symmetric fair d6s that can exist in 3D space. What's going on here is you start with a basic cube shaped D6, turn it on its point, grab the top and bottom edges, and give them a big old twist. This elongates or shrinks the same edge on every face, so each side stays the same shape and all the angles stay radially symmetrical. You then stretch or squash the dice to make it look even more deformed, though remember since you're scaling every face and angle at once, it's still just as fair. I can demonstrate all this because Carlos didn't just upload some printable files, he shared the open sketch script that generated the files. The best part is when you give it to someone and they bring it to game night, no one is going to believe these things are fair. This pain train just keeps on rolling. Is there dice? If these affronts to rationality are making you yearn for the sweet stability of conventional geometry, have I got the sponsor for you. Brilliant.org lets you explore algebra, statistics, and good old-fashioned geometry the way everything should be explored, by seeing and doing. Memorizing equations sucks, but when you experiment with Brilliant's interactive demos, you're building a real intuitive understanding that you can actually use in your daily life. And who knows, you might just happen to remember an equation or two. Take this one, Geometry Fundamentals. It's it's one thing to just remember a triangle's angles add to 180 degrees, but when you stretch and squash and see the results, it just makes it make sense. A linear regression data model sounds confusing, but it's really just fitting a line through some points. Brilliant can even make calculus friendly. A derivative you can drag is a lot less scary than weird S-shaped squiggles on a worksheet. If you'd like to see the world from a new angle, you can try Brilliant.org for 30 days absolutely free by visiting Brilliant.org slash Zach Friedman or clicking the link in the description. The first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. There's just so much to explore. You can even dive into the history of math, like the sieve of Eratosthenes, an algorithm that predates the idea of a computer by eh, give or take 2,300 years. Now that we're marinated in historical juices, one of my favorite kinds of model is ancient artwork and artifacts. If you have a nice reel of faux marble filament, these just come out so classy. But why make class when you can make crass? Taint their perception with number nine, the Renaissance light switch cover plate by Daddy Wazzy the Creator. Michelangelo's David usually towers over Florentine tourists, but this little guy graces any standard American light switch, embedded in the wall like a less manly Han Solo. As for the little guy's little guy, this masterpiece's memorably meager member has never, proportionally speaking, been girthier. Dorks in my comment section love nagging me about how I'm always printing junk, but this time, the junk is the part that's not printed. I am rapidly approaching the demonetization event horizon, so let's just say this is the perfect choice for the pretentious antiquarian in your life who needs a light switch with 
a tallywhacker. Our next model also uses a mid-course filament swap to scuff an intellectual's metaphorical Jordans, but in this case, it's the kind of dweeb who looks at an optical illusion and says, actually, it's technically a trompe-l'oeil. Turn a brainiac into a brain wreck with number eight, the impossible jigsaw puzzle by 3D Print Bunny. Some of you may be wondering, how is a puzzle that prints pre-assembled impossible? Others are wondering, why haven't I popped this thing off the build plate yet? Now, kiss. With 160 tiny, fragile, and almost identical pieces, the stress of solving this square of spite is enough to make a Zen master punt a bonsai. Those spirals around the edge are randomly rotated, so decrypting which piece goes where is down to nothing but blind guesswork and endless hours of backtracking. Of course, every tab and every slot is the same size, so you don't even get any clues. This might be a nightmare to solve, but it is a pleasure to print. With zero post-process cleanup required, the impossible puzzle is as trivial as it gets. I switched in a contrasting filament so you can see the pattern on video, but for maximum malice, just don't bother. Just print the whole thing in one color. Make the color black. Make it carbon fiber so it's extra black. And, you know, if we're already printing more stuff, why not print a few unnecessary extra puzzle pieces to throw in? After all, more is always better. Except when it's not. This may be a small package, but it unfolds into one of the slickest, coolest prints I have ever featured on my channel. Strap on number seven, the mini wrist slingshot by Jotnen 3 d It looks like a rough and ready reduced scale rendition of that bracer mounted wrist rocket from the D&D movie, because that's exactly what it is. The previous design was just like a clone of the movie prop. But the second gen version isn't just smaller and lighter, it is positively bulging with cheeky features. First, this prints in place. That's right, no sanding, no gluing, no assembly. You just pop it off the plate, add some Velcro, tie on something stretchy, and let her rip. You get two choices of pouch thing. Use the cup light cradle A to fire the nearest aerodynamic object, or the boxy cradle B to launch custom printed cubes. If you do the latter, you can store nine rounds in the built-in ammo box, complete with snap top lid, which I'll remind you, entirely prints in place. When the encounter ends, snap the arms down and secure the cradle, and you got yourself a stealthy low profile package that doesn't make you look like a tiefling. Just a heads up, you should print this in PETG, or better yet, ABS, because PLA tends to snap when it gets overloaded. Either way, you must print the cradle in TPU. It's just too thin to run off in anything rigid. Also, do not fire the 3D printed ammo anywhere near a living creature. Even your softest filament will pop someone's eyeball like a ripe grape. So why am I telling you to print this for someone you hate? I'm not. I'm telling you to print it for their kids. They'll love you. The kids, not the parents. The parents are gonna shoot you the dirtiest look ever with their unpopped eye. But suppose you wanna raise the stakes. You don't just wanna ruin their vision, you wanna rot their teeth too. Pack sweet heat with number six, black black goes the candy gat, the 3D printable candy shooter by Solo Prototype. This is a Pez dispenser, and what is a Pez dispenser but a licensed head on a candy magazine? Every kid that plays too many video games will eventually grip their Pez dispenser, extend their index finger, and cock their thumb. It's the human condition. In a world where 3D printers are cheaper than actual toys, kids don't have to make believe. You can just make it. Jotten in 3D, same guy, or gal, or cyborg, or a combination thereof in a trench coat. They imploded my inner child's mind with this diabolically clever model that uses Pez dispensers as magazines. There's no motor to solder, there's no clockwork to wind, there isn't even a plunger to prime like a Nerf blaster. This is a real deal double action trigger. Squeeze hard to compress the spring and the sear automatically drops the hammer and kicks a stale sugar rectangle right off the mag. It is a rough trigger pull since it's priming the spring with no mechanical advantage. So I recommend applying a food safe and plastic safe lubricant like Super Lube. But once you get the knack, the candy gap works impressively well, and the model's generous tolerances don't need much touching up after printing. And it uses Pez dispensers as magazines. Okay, fine, this does demand a minute or two of confectionery field surgery before you can get locking and loading. You gotta decapitate the mascot, remove the candy retention tabs, and cut a slot for the pusher. None of this is very difficult. Like, all you need is a flush cutter and a few seconds to say goodbye to my little pony and say hello to my little friend. 
Our next item is also food related. Number five is a cup. And normally this is where I warn you to never eat or drink anything off a 3D print. But this time, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Behold the cup of teeth by Dave Makes Stuff. It's a teacup studded with anatomically correct human teeth. And it's perched atop a saucer. That too is studded with anatomically correct human teeth. It's a cup with teeth. It's a teeth cup. It even comes with bonus teeth to put inside your teeth cup. Sup dog, Dave dropped this demented dentition during last year's Halloween, but recently remixed it for multi-material machines. Unfortunately for you, me, and society in general, I have a multi-material bamboo X1C, and I have plenty of filament in gingivitis pink and pearly white. There is just something existentially revolting about flossing a teacup. And I am now wondering whether there's a way to put the filament back on the spool. If you want even more anatomically correct human teeth in your life, you sick mother Dave Makes Stuff also made a toothy dish, toothy ornament, toothy gumballs, and a grinning skull jangling with jiggly, wiggly, anatomically correct human teeth. The climate apocalypse just cannot come fast enough. Don't forget to brush your teacup before going to bed. Our next item, number four, is the perfect choice for the hardworking procrastinator who leaves no flat surface uncluttered. The desk clearing mechanism by 3D Printy. Bolt this contraption to the table, turn the crank, and a nifty system of levers and gears sweeps the crap straight onto the floor. Some may call this cheating, but is it? Folks say clean your desk, folks say clean the floor, but have you ever been told to clean your desk and the floor simultaneously? QED. That's short for quickly empty desk. As you can see, this print doesn't really work. This project's creator, 3D Printy, has their own YouTube channel, and they whack this together as a one-off sight gag to end one of their videos. It only had to be reliable enough for 30 seconds of B-roll, and I find that absolutely charming. This might sound a little weird, but even though I make silly videos, I don't really design silly projects. Like, apart from Christopher the Quagsire, almost everything I create is meant to be at least theoretically practical. So I have a question. Do you want me to make sillier projects? Let me know down below. Speaking of silly printing, I just got back from the Sanji Mortimer Rep Rap Fest in Oxford, England. And while Smurf absolutely deserves and is gonna get its own video, I just wanna say I love seeing so many wacky prints and the folks who make them. Among others, I ran into Nero 3D, Alley Cats, even 3D Print Bunny, the very same lady who designed that abominable puzzle. But late in the second day, someone spotted me, walked right up, and pulled a knife on me. And I looked at it. Number three is the Circle Game Gravity Knife by Daniel Josfi. This satisfyingly squat pocket-sized print mimics the sliding lock mechanism used to circumvent switchblade bands. Except instead of a pointy bit, the business end is a painfully stale old meme. But while a blade can rend the flesh, this bad boy's business end is, and I quote, expediently designed to inflict emotional damage. Also an annoying fidget toy. It is very fidgety, and I can see some folks finding that a wee bit irksome but at the end, it's okay. Since this really does use gravity and inertia to deploy the blade, you wanna print the slider as heavy as possible. Daniel recommends running this in 100% infill, and I took it even further by using stainless steel composite. It made it satisfyingly weighty, and that's also how I managed to polish it up so shiny. After all, clean work makes the meme work. We've studied the blade, so let's keep things edgy with some tactical gear. The dictionary defines tactical as an action or strategy carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Real men rip that dictionary in half and spike the halves in a toilet bowl, because in the real world, tactics means three things. It's black, it's manly, and it attaches to other black manly things. Immerse your brewski in modern warfare with the Tacticuzzi V3 by Rusty Shackleford 777. On its own, the Tacticuzzi is a pretty funny little gimmick. It holds a beer and it's got a flash hider. Everyone laugh. But the tactical twist, those Picatinny rails actually work. Any accessory you could slap on a real steel bang stick can now decorate your dog water. Get a grip on the iconic AR-15 style carry handle complete with windage adjustable two aperture rear sight and of course baked in Punisher skull. Noobs get beer goggles, but operators mount a beer scope. For extra stability, deploy a SIG style folding stock featuring a padded butt plate for recoil mitigation. A red dot reflex sight maintains peripheral awareness and mid-range drinking engagements, but it's pointing at the floor. So print this right angle Picatinny adapter to accelerate target acquisition. No, not that right angle, the other right angle. 
Why the f*** does this exist? Now hold on, I hear you say. A stein straight out of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades may be mildly impractical, but it still claps significant cheeks. Why waste it on someone you hate? Well, listen here, you hay-stuffed bird deterrent. The Tacticuzzi is not number two. I never said it was. It's just an accessory for number two. The Double Picatinny Adapter by Dr. Jamal. This lets you attach one Picatinny rail to another Picatinny rail. So instead of putting a pistol grip on your Steve Bruschemi, you can use the entire pistol. Our final item is not a gimmick, it's not a bait and switch, I'm playing this straight, it is truly, sincerely terrible. Give this only to people you want to suffer, and keep this only if you have patrons paying to watch you suffer. Number one is a lamp. It is a very cool lamp, with meshing gears that really work and a skeletonized aesthetic that frankly looks breathtaking in this silk ombre PLA. It's made of nothing but flat plates and round rods, so it prints incredibly quickly with zero supports, but the convenience ends there. Number one is the Stand Lamp Office by Boon Sewing Panita, and some assembly is required. This lamp comprises no fewer than 50 different STLs with highly descriptive file names like Big Arm and Part. You need multiples of almost every part, but there's no checklist, there's no assembly diagram. There isn't even a clear picture of what this thing is supposed to look like. Allow me to read you the full description. Easy to print. This model's creator just dumped 50 STLs and 4 GeoCities quality JPEGs, went out for a pack of smokes, and never came back. In their defense, it is quite easy to print. A single comment got a reply, and it's not from the creator. Where does one find the manual for assembly, they ask. The reply, in Spanish, translates to, look at the photo and assemble it the same, bro. There is no Spanish word for bro. It says bro. But you don't need to worry about anything except hitting print. You know why? Because your gifty ain't getting a lamp. You're giving them a kit. You're going to run off all 100-ish unidentifiable elements, plop the box of bits right onto their lap, look them in the eye, and tell them, look at the photo and assemble it the same, bro. And you know what? They'll do it. The sheer curiosity, the temptation to see this thing move, is borderline irresistible. It got me, and you know what? It deserved it. There are no fake steampunk gears making this thing look more complicated than it really is. The creator did this the hard way. Every single sprocket and strut is a necessary moving piece in a fully functional mechanical system. Turn the knob on the base to pivot the lamp left and right, and twist the knob on the arm to carry the light up and out. The entire lamp is a single giant mechanical linkage, and watching all these parts slip past and through each other is even more mesmerizing up close. Your victim will waste hours and hours and hours figuring out which peg goes in which hole, which gear meshes which, what to glue, what to grease, and then stripping it down over and over because they forgot a washer. I blew an entire day bashing my head against this f***ing lamp, and I still have no clue whether I actually got it all right. Also, since there's no bill of materials, I don't actually know what kind of socket cord thing you're supposed to use. I just stripped down a work light and hot glued it. When the documentation is missing, anything is possible. So is this a practical desk lamp? Absolutely not. There's nothing preventing the light bulb from just going flaccid, and you know, since the entire thing is three millimeter thick printed strips on pivoting joints, it is as rickety as it gets. That said, this is one of very, very few projects I've featured that just made me step back, look at what I made, and think, holy crap, I actually built this. I cannot comprehend how someone can craft such intricate mechanisms, make them move so beautifully, imbue every piece with stylistic flourish, and just f***ing dump it onto the information superhighway from a moving car. Whatever the story, this is a lovely model anyone will absolutely unconditionally completely despise every single second struggling to build. What can I say? The real stand lamp office is the friends we made miserable along the way. And that is 10 horrible 3D prints whose very existence makes the entire world just a little bit shittier. Each one is free to download, and I've put links and creator credits in the description, as well as the filaments I printed them in. These affiliate links siphon money directly out of Jeff Bezos' pocket and help keep the lights on. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Cool Kids table at patreon.com slash Zach Friedman. Each episode, I thank three Random Lab Scientist supporters, and today's silly billies are Valen, Dustin Miller, and Fabian Lusher. Special thanks to our spiff collaborators. The suits are in 
our fun, microwave, the benevolent misanthrope, e to the i pie, what the chuck, bit rot, dysfunctional potato, Roxanne, Zombo DB, Schleppy the Schwagster, SXP, and Turner Zay. I've hidden their names somewhere in this episode and eternally enshrined them in my 3D printing workshop. Can you find them, or would you rather not be reminded of the Teeth Cup's existence? Thank you very much. Speaking of cursed aberrations made sickeningly real, let's thank our lab assistant supporters. Kevin DeGraff, Kink Shaming Walrus, Zap for Robert the Bob, Colin J. Webb is adding flour yeast and salt one episode at a time till Void Star Bakery provides an Erga Bread recipe. My next video will be about the Mirage Mark IV. Viwatch, DBD, Ergay, Runzak, they're right behind you. Ah! Cody, Jiggle the Puffs, Xanforian, Azunda, Wielder of Iron, Heater of Shrink. When cooking pickles on blue, make sure to take care and not mix up the neutral and ground or the sugar may interact with stuff. Bob Dobbington, Martin Titonium, subscribe to the next layer on YouTube. Seriously, I saw him at Smurf. That video is next, hopefully, not the Mirage Mark IV. Lydia K, 6A6F656E75, Callsign Carrot, Amir Rahum, The Antifa, Evan Kenny, Granville Schmidt, Noah B. Johnson, General Buck Turgidson, Period Clots, Trans Rights, John Loves Jen, Kevin Sumner, Travis Hippa, Onyx Plague, Bootsy Von Poopstein, Michael Creamer Jr., Aaron Steers, VPS Data, Acorn, Kermit the OG Frog, Rusty Flute, Topher VK2KTJ, Cliff Henning, Dr. Mrs. the Merman, Emily, Cameron Ogletree, Burnett, Sticks Like the River, Not the Band, Clayton Easley, Pussy Nuggets, Circle Zero, Zach Harvey, Adam Birch, Paul Gibbs, Bradley Carter, Quantumly Tangled, Agent Maxwell, Brad Cox, Nova Ren, Carnamon, Not a Digimon, Nathan Johnson, Doom Crew Inc., Blamo, Incognito, Good Suck Bum, Tickly 69, SKL, Steve's Dad, Moonkin, Michael, Robert Breeze, Probably Not Three Raccoons in a Trench Coat, Thunder Chicken, But Seriously, Ladies, Gentlemen, Cyborgs, Every Name I Just Read Out Loud is Fake, Seriously, I'm the Real Subscribers. My husband watches Now I Am Too, so hi to me and Urch. Mike Kelly, Socks McGox, Cameron McPherson, Matthew Arrington, My Dog is a Bear, The Cuddle Fish, Steven Six Foot Six Figure Six Pack Schulte, Bryn Six Foot Five Figure Forlorn Wolf Schulte. Visit OhMy3DPrints.com for all your 3D printed RPG product needs. Nuclear 314, Advanced AI Building Real Chris versus 2023, Looking Me Over You On, Foreignly Known Juicy Legend, Drew, The Monk, Spire, Good Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars. Stuart Little Dude, The Sweetest Boy, That Better Be a Puppy. Bill Schooler, Storby Design, Olive Robbins, Michael Roche, Haley Kerman, Jamie, Scroto Sagan, Sandy Devoid of Life, Max Luck is Backstabbing Barbarian, mm, Zach, Iron Rain, Cacophony of Failure, Craft Computing, Big Bird, Tommy Wucko's Bump of the Night, Burn Duck 3, Cross Threading is Just Free Loctite, Double the Threads, Double the Strength, Amanishi, Boulder Creek Yard, James, Jason, Trump Did Nothing Wrong, Protagonist, Even Bluetooth Has a Right to Repair, Slippy McToof, Sunburnt Cat, Elite Giant, Joel Damon, Vigeli, Powerful CCH, Renaud Bataille, Measure Once Cut Twice, Re Glue Cut Again, Timor is in a Healthy Obsession with 42mm Sized Objects, Micah, I Own Multiple Picos, Friedman, Dax Dastardly Seeks Seth's Checks, Rinry, Quality Doggo, Talent Democrat, Socialist, Pretty Righteous Dude, Dash Zach, Shane Frederick, Dennis Kempen, Eddie, Varka, and Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, the sole surviving Chinese theater in any American Chinatown. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again for Tooth Hurdy Tea. F***ing funny.